Salve a tutti ragazzi, bentornati sul canale di Quel Taleale. Eccoci qui di nuovo con Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain con il terzo presumo video extra per quanto riguarda le cassette audio. Siccome abbiamo fatto nel frattempo un bel po' di cosucce, direi di eh, fare un altro video dedicato all'ascolto di queste cassette. Come sempre, la serie prosegue con i gameplay, eccetera, eccetera. Questo è per approfondire la trama di gioco, quindi chi interessa le segue, chi no, no. Io me le sento perché uh, sono importanti per la storia Siccome sto apprezzando tantissimo questo Metal Gear Voglio sapere qualunque cosa Allora uh, andiamo a vedere un attimo Già da qui giù A parte che ci sono Africa odierna eccetera eccetera I White Mamba Anche vedremo Sentiremo un po' qualcosa Andiamo però sull'impianto della morte Visto che siamo in zona tempistica Per quanto riguarda l'epidemia Vediamo uh, se ci dice qualcosa inerente anche a questo qui Andiamo a sentire allora Boss About those invalids you saw in that devil's house. Poor bastards. All strapped down to the beds, with those lumps on their chest. The medical staff tell me they were probably a type of cyst. Cysts can get that big. In some cases, yes. But supposing they're a kind of atheroma forming on the surface of the skin, the size is just too big, and the appearance is all wrong. In the end, the medical team were at a loss. Those lumps were like nothing they'd ever seen. The fluid you said you got on your prosthesis when you touched one was burned off in the fighting, and the factory burned down too. None of the tests we did once you were back at the base revealed a pathogen that could have caused them. Meaning we don't have a single sample to work with. Everything went up in flames. What worries the medical team most is whether it's contagious. Whether there's a chance we could end up like that. And? Mother Base's sanitation control has always been strict. After all, war is great at transporting diseases. For the time being at least, there's no sign of contagion or any symptoms that could be related. One more thing. About the surgery that had been performed on the people in the Devil's House. Yeah. You said that their throats were cut open, with an acoustic tube pushed inside? Right. The tubes were hooked up to tape recorders, playing some kind of audio. Well, we picked up some of that audio through your radio transmissions and recorded it here. The Intel team has been working on analyzing the communications lock. What have they found? There's nothing tying the contents together. We've got a report on three deaths in a car accident on the auto route near Marseille. Protests outside the Libyan embassy in London. A press conference with the former prime minister of Sweden. A four-month-old weather forecast for Balikpapan. And then commercials for appliances, cough syrup and TV dinners. Assuming they're not all staged, they come off as recordings of your average public broadcasts. Public broadcasts? Just radio and TV signals? Yes. And from all over the world. We're looking into whether they're genuine or not, just to be sure. What else? A speech that sounds like it was recorded out on the street, and people chatting about how this year's tomato crop did. And there's nothing they have in common? We're partway through the cryptanalysis. That includes checking all audio ranges and running it backward and at different speeds. Then there's vocabulary breakdown for political suggestions, ideological common points. But I don't think it's going to get us anywhere. Where were the recordings made? There's nothing linking them from that angle either. Just like you reported, we've detected virtually every major language there is. French, German, Italian, Spanish, including South American accents. Then there's Russian. Hindi, Arabic, Portuguese, Mandarin, Cantonese, Japanese. They're nothing if not thorough. <laughs> well, I don't know if we've got them all covered. Ignoring the ones that have gone extinct, supposedly over 5,000 languages exist today. Besides, English isn't one of the ones we picked up. Really? English? I know. Only 5% of the world's population is a native English speaker. But when you factor in those who've acquired it as a second language, nearly one-third of the people speak it. The world's dominant lingua franca. You gotta figure they had it somewhere among all the languages in that place. No English. Bear in mind we didn't hear everything that was played in that room. We couldn't isolate the more distant sounds due to static and the... Well, the program could have been set to change every day. In a nutshell, for reasons unknown, People in that room with a common medical condition were made to listen to recordings in languages from around the world. It's not clear how the growths on their chests fit into it. It could have been treatment for them, or maybe an experiment of some kind. I'm guessing one person knows. Yeah, Skullface. He was there. The only thing we can say for sure is that he's involved. 
Perfetto, quindi la cosa che abbiamo scoperto da queste cassette è che l'unica lingua non inserita in queste appunto cassette era l'inglese. Ehm, adesso andiamo a sentirci anche il White Mamba, che è quello che abbiamo raccattato, che qualcuno di voi sicuramente avrà notato una certa somiglianza con un altro personaggio, però vedremo, non so se potrebbe essere, chissà, qualcuno ha detto Liquid Snake, non lo so, vedremo. Naturalmente ad occhio, eh, non, è, non spoilerate chi già può sapere qualcosa, se sa che non è lui, eccetera, eccetera, però comunque non spoilerate, queste sono cose che diciamo così in base a quello che abbiamo visto finora e la somiglianza era quella, l'età potrebbe essere quella, il fatto che avevano detto che uh, combaciava con gli, le sperimentazioni del programma Les Enfants Terribles che tutti quanti dovete conoscere grazie al primo Metal Gear Solid, quindi c'era Liquid Snake e Solid Snake, tra gli altri è, uh, questo è abbastanza simile a Liquid Snake. Comunque vedremo più avanti. Come sempre, non spoilerate ragazzi, mi raccomando. The White Mamba. Nyoka Yam Pembe. He's the commander of the kids based out of Wala Yamasa. As you know, contract forces of Africa were stationed at that village. Anti-government forces hired CRS to bring kids there from around Africa for training. But at some point the adults with the PF started dropping like flies. This was right after we arrived in Africa. We don't know the cause. The kids ended up on their own. Must have been like fish out of water. Nothing to eat, no way to get back home. All the adults taught them was how to use a gun. Sure, they could shoot targets, but hunt for food? Not likely. They wouldn't have lasted long. Then the White Mamba showed up. He was faster and stronger than them. A better soldier, and he knew how to lead. I guess somebody wished upon a star, because their savior turned up like stardust straight out of the blue. The moment he arrived, the kids had their new commander. That was when they started attacking other villages. Word of the infamous White Mamba spread fast. But it isn't just his combat skills that got people talking. As you can tell from the name, he's the only light-skinned kid in the unit. Not to mention the blonde hair and the blue eyes. Not common in those parts. We have no idea where he came from or what he's experienced. The kid's a huge blank. But I'm sure you'll know him when you see him. One other thing. He's still a kid, so don't kill him. Be careful not to hit him with anything lethal. Not even a flesh wound. Our mission objective isn't just suppressing a bunch of militants. This is a DDR operation of the kids in that unit. DDR stands for Disarmament, Demobilization, and Reintegration. Disarmament is obvious. We take their weapons off their hands. The demobilization part means dismantling their military organization to ensure they can't arm themselves again. To do that, you need to capture the unit's commander and have him order his men to disband. In this case, the commander is the White Mamba. There's nobody above him, so he's all we need to grab. Finally, reintegration. Through education and occupational training, we give them a means to live besides war. A lot of kids born in a war zone don't know any other way to live. So before they find themselves back there, we teach them another skill. I'd like to establish this rehabilitation process at Mother Base. That's why we're bringing those kids back here. It's not so much for their sake. It's for the world that we're trying to create. No other way about it. Those kids are amateurs. Bad for business to have them running around where we're trying to work. Bring them all back if possible. Or as many as you can. We placed the White Mamba and the rest of his unit in the staff living quarters. How's that going? It's a disaster, but what else can we do? We've taken away his weapons and banned him from using his nom de guerre. Apparently his real name is Eli. He must feel like we stripped him of his whole identity. We'll let things simmer down. I put a guard on him for now. Still the question is, who is he? Where did he come from? And how has he survived? He's still not talking. No. He won't say a word about himself. But you know, it looks like he speaks English. One of the deck crew called out to him in English, and he said something back. He just lost it all of a sudden, started mouthing off at the guy, in perfect English. He wasn't stringing together words he picked up somewhere. So English is his mother tongue. He could be from the east, or the south, or maybe even further north or south. English is well established in countries all across the continent. It's rooted in Africa like a weed. Or maybe parasite is the better word. So just speaking English doesn't help us figure out where he comes from. Could even be from off-continent. Right. In any case, we'll keep an eye on him. If we learn anything else, I'll be sure to let you know. 
perfetto allora anche queste abbiamo sentito vediamo cos'altro possiamo andare a vedere uh, anche lì un altro interrogatorio questi li abbiamo sentiti andiamo con il secondo you call that thing Sahalanthropus where does the name come from? well several years ago an excavation team discovered a hominid skull in the Sahel region Central Africa the Southern Sahara Cypher gave the specimen the name Sahalanthropus man of Sahel and then they covered the whole thing up why? They probably wanted to monopolize information about human evolution to have a head start in their genetic research. At least, until they had an idea of what they'd found. It was that big of a discovery, huh? Sahalanthropus was a gracile hominid, estimated to have lived about 7 million years ago. What's significant about it is how its skulls, foramen magnum faces down. In other words, its spinal column supported its head from underneath. It stood upright. Right, which would mean Sahelanthropus walked upright three million years before Australopithecus, making it the world's oldest human species. Walking upright. I get it. Hence the name Sahelanthropus for your machine. Walking upright was the decisive difference between our ancestors and other anthropoids. Our brains could get heavier once they were supported by the spinal column. That led to the use of tools and the development of complex communication through language. Only man is capable of this. My creation will be the progenitor of all bipedal weapon platforms. And you did this for Cypher? No, not at all. Sahelanthropus is the best proof that I never betrayed you guys. What do you mean? The reconstructed Sahelanthropus skull looked exactly like the skull we used as our logo nine years ago in the Caribbean. An army without a nation. Outside the world order. The design was based on Pangaea, the supercontinent that existed 250 million years ago, right? Yeah. When the world was a single landmass, that concept's at the source of our strength. I felt the same way about Sahelanthropus. Sure, I was forced to build it under their orders, but I always wanted to put its technology back in our hands someday. That's the reason I incorporated the old insignia into Sahelanthropus' oh, name. Shortly. Don't you see? That's how much I was thinking about you guys. Oh, I see, all right. I see someone desperate to cover his ass. You can say whatever you want after the fact. But that skull also symbolizes somebody else. Skull face. Snake, you finally came. Just don't record this, okay? I'm not recording anything. What's this about? What I'm about to say stays between you and me. It's about the weapon to surpass Metal Gear. <sighs> Do you know a researcher by the name of Clark? He works in the biotech industry. Real advanced stuff. His area is bioengineering, but lately, he's also gotten into genetic research. Never heard of him. Well then, what do you know about cloning? <sighs> I think I've heard enough. Hold on, this is important. Cloning lets you create a genetic copy of an organism. You take the nucleus of one of its cells, and you swap it with the nucleus of an unfertilized egg from another member of the same species. They started out working with plants, but since then they've had success with other organisms, including mammals. It's a hot area for a lot of places right now. Corporations, universities, research groups. There's no shortage of scientists out to get famous and patent their work, with morality taking a back seat. Isn't that a little outside your field? It's got nothing to do with my research. But I thought it might be of interest to you. Cloning, and Dr. Clark, I mean. Go on. Now, this is really highly classified stuff, but I've heard that an American biotech company has successfully cloned a human being. What's more, it happened over 10 years ago, and the researcher behind it was Dr. Clark. You've really never heard of him? I don't meet many doctors. This Dr. Clark is a complete ghost, even to others in his field. His age, where he comes from, that might not be his real name. 
And I can't even say for sure he's a he. Clark's employer, ATGC, its company motto is embracing your hopes, preserving talent. What does this have to do with me? Cypher. Dr. Clark works for ATGC, and they have connections to DARPA. Cypher couldn't function without the communications network DARPA's built. Meaning, Cypher has to be a part of the Pentagon. Or at least, the two are joined at the hip. DARPA is a driving force behind human cloning. It's a pretty high-priority project for them. And this Dr. Clark? Some say he's a pivotal player in Cypher. But that's not all. Every cell nucleus in an organism contains the genetic information for that organism. Think of it as a blueprint for life. Clark appears to be working on how to decode this information and rearrange it at will. If you could do that, it would mean being able to custom design human beings for specific purposes. Can you believe that? Suppose for a moment that this is all fact. A man of your talents, if your genetic information died with you, that would be a terrible loss for mankind. But what if mankind could preserve you for future generations by cloning you? All right, enough. I get the idea. Look, I know it's inductive reasoning, but this weapon to surpass Metal Gear they're developing in Africa, I believe it's something that uses this new technology. <sighs> Speaking as a fellow scientist, it chills me to the bone. That's rich coming from you. If genes serve as our blueprint, then I wonder if they include an impulse that drives us to tweak the design. Can you imagine that? Genes encoded with information that wants its children to decode it. Is life itself putting the direction of our next evolution in the hands of scientists? I guess it would take some real arrogance to believe that. And yet, it could be what Cypher's after. I think you're barking up the wrong tree. But that was an interesting story. It'd make a good movie. You have to believe me. Where'd you hear all this anyway? Where? I just overheard it in bits and pieces while I was forced to do that research for them. Right. W wait a minute. Look. I want to help you. I want to be of service here. I'm risking my life with this. Is that so? Maybe it's time we brought someone else into the conversation. No, not him. Not Ocelot. You can't do this. Ok, perfetto, e da questo interrogatore, questi interrogatori abbiamo sentito ancora qualcosina sul progetto di clonazione. Abbiamo risentito la DARPA sempre dal primo Metal Gear Solid, quindi quello che porterà anche presumibilmente la clonazione al progetto Les Enfants Terribles, la clonazione eccetera eccetera per chi conosce la storia. Ok, sono molto interessanti queste cassette perché vi danno un approfondimento maggiore, quindi per questo io voglio sentirle tutte, eh, non in questo video naturalmente, però adesso ci andiamo a sentire anche il carico di Cyber, uno qui e... sì, ci sentiamo questo, dai. I have the report on that cargo we stole from Cypher's truck. The PF was transporting two things. The analysis of that malachite has come back first. Naturally, the main compound is copper. There's also a small amount of cobalt. Nothing unusual so far. Southern Zaire is a well-known copper belt. However, in addition to these, we also detected a trace amount of uranium. The content percentage, though, is too low for nuclear development. It most likely came from Shinkalobwe mine. That's where the uranium in that area comes from. The mine's closed, as all the high-purity uranium ore dried up a long time ago. But you could probably still find it there in small quantities. That said, there are plenty of other uranium mines that are in operation, like in Niger, Namibia, South Africa. Why go to an abandoned mine to scrape up whatever's left and ship it out in mass quantities without refining it? They were transporting that yellow cake, too, which would suggest they have the technology to refine uranium. Anyway, that about sums it up. Unfortunately, the analysis of that yellow cake is taking a little longer. I'll let you know when it's done. Boss, sorry to keep you waiting. We finally finished analyzing that yellow cake Cypher was moving. There was nothing unusual about the composition of the yellow cake itself. 
Most of it was oxidized uranium, with the rest being impurities, various metals as well as traces of organic matter. What's interesting is the composition of these impurities. When we checked them against the impurities found in the copper ore, it was clear the yellow cake didn't come from Shinkalobwe, meaning they went to the trouble of mining two sources of uranium, then transported them together in different states. Another thing, we detected a very thin layer of highly enriched uranium in the middle of the yellow cake. Now that is very interesting. It may not be a lot, but it points to the existence of uranium enriching technology. After all, yellow cake can't naturally produce highly enriched uranium. If they could mass produce this, they'd be just one step away from a gun barrel type nuclear bomb. But uranium enrichment requires advanced technology and a large scale facility. If that kind of place existed in Zaire, the Soviet Union wouldn't sit idly by. And there's another question. Where were they transporting the yellow cake and malachite uranium? The first place that comes to mind is South Africa. The government was supposed to have abandoned nuclear weapons development after caving to international pressure. But rumors persist that it's continued in secret. Plus, CRS were escorting the truck, and they're based out of South Africa. And then South Africa does have an abandoned test site. If Cypher's involved with nuclear development in South Africa, but how would that fit with their weapon to surpass Metal Gear? We need more information. Shinka Lobwe. There's a name I haven't heard in a while. The U.S. bought a lot of uranium from Shinka Lobwe mine during World War II for the Manhattan Project. They even sent a squad from the Army Corps of Engineers to reopen the mine after it was flooded. That's how good its uranium must have been. With that, the world's first nuclear test was a success. Shikolobwe uranium might have been used in the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs, too. Just hearing its name is like seeing all the phantoms of the war rise up to haunt us. But all the uranium's dried up, and the mine's been closed for years. So someone reopened it. Right. Zero Risk Security seized control of the area and were forcing locals to work in it. And the Zairean government was getting a slice of what they took in exchange for looking the other way. Mobutu has to finance his taste somehow. He'll gladly sell the rights to some old mine. The question is, why would Zero Risk Security do this kind of thing? Or rather, why were their employers, Cypher, interested in an abandoned mine? They'd be getting trace amounts of uranium, yet to the naked eye it appears to be ordinary malachite, meaning security would be lax. Not a very efficient way of obtaining it, but easier to move. But how would they enrich it at its destination? Did the yellow cake really have a layer of highly enriched uranium in it? Having trouble believing it? No. If they say it's real, then it's real. In which case, they might have some enrichment method that we don't know about. And this was to test it out? It's possible. And that would mean it's almost complete. Ok, perfetto, allora sappiamo anche qualcosa in più sull'arricchimento dell'uranio, come lo stavano facendo e come lo stavano trasportando, ce ne sono ancora un po' da sentire, naturalmente non lo faremo in questo video, ma nei prossimi ci è rimasto alla mother base e sorte aveva detto relativo alla mother base, un paio di quiet... E Africa odierna Va bene ragazzi allora per questo altro video extra Io direi di salutarci qui Fatemi come sempre sapere la vostra La, se la serie prosegue Trovate sempre le annotazioni Se su PC riuscite a cliccarci e Andare al walkthrough E poi proseguiremo anche con questi eh, video extra Per capire al meglio la storia di questo Metal Gear Solid Ci vediamo allora con il prossimo appuntamento E seguitemi anche sulla pagina Facebook E sul secondo canale Dai un saluto a tutti da Quel Taleale